Hi, Els here, and in this video we'll be exploring accounts receivable that are uncollectible. In our last video we noted that the accounts receivable balance on the balance sheet might not be at its future economic benefit. That's because one of the customers of ABC Company appeared to be having trouble paying their accounts receivable balance. This customer had an outstanding accounts receivable of $18,000 at the end of 2014. We know that assets have to be equal to their future economic benefit, and this accounts receivable of $18,000 will likely not have future benefit because the customer may never pay. What should be done about this customer? Well, depending on how sure we are that we'll never get paid, we might write off the accounts receivable. But what if we're uncertain? What if we think the customer may pay, say, next year? That would mean that, at December 31, 2014, this is actually a good accounts receivable. It's still collectible. In that case, we would not write off the customer. We'd keep that amount as part of our outstanding accounts receivable at year end. Let's explore what can happen then. Say ABC Company has $360,000 in outstanding accounts receivable at December 31, 2014. Remember that we recorded the 18000 as accounts receivable in sales on November 1, 2014. I'm reminding you of this for a reason. It's really important. Keep that fact in mind as we move through this video. Assume that this is ABC's first year of operations. These accounts receivable on the balance sheet relate to sales on the income statement in 2014. Remember our entry in our first video. Assets accounts receivable went up and revenue on the income statement went up too. Total sales at December 31st, 2014 on the income statement are $1,450,000. This includes the $360,000 of sales that were made on account and have not as yet been collected in cash, as well as $1,090,000 that have already been collected in cash. Now, remember that ABC has decided not to write off the $18,000 customer who they suspect may not pay because they're fairly certain the customer will pay in the future. They just need a little bit more time. The customer is definitely paying late, but ABC believes that they will pay. ABC Company publishes their financial statements at December 31, 2014, and their accounts receivable balance is $360,000. Their sales are $1,450,000. Now, ABC's 2015 fiscal year starts. January, February, and March go by, and the customer doesn't pay. Finally, on April 1st, ABC Company is sure that the customer will never pay, and they decide to write off the account. The accountant, who doesn't know much about uncollectible accounts, does the following entry. Negative 18000 under accounts receivable, reducing assets. Negative 18000 under bad debt expense, reducing equity. So, the account has now been written off on April 1st. You're probably thinking, what's wrong with that? After all, the customer went bad, so we should get rid of their accounts receivable. I agree, we have to, but the other side of the entry should not be bad debt expense. Why not? To understand this, you have to go back to the original entry that we did in 2014. In 2014, we recorded an increase in assets and an increase to equity through revenues because we sold services on account. The revenue from that sale is in 2014, on the 2014 income statement. If in 2015, we record a decrease to equity, because the customer went bad, the bad debt expense is included in 2015 on the 2015 income statement. Do you remember your definition of the element expense from our previous videos? Expenses are used, consumed, or incurred in order to help generate revenue. They must be recorded in the same period as the related revenue. Expenses have to be matched to the revenue they help to generate. But that's not the case here. We're recording an expense in 2015, but the revenue from that sale is in 2014, a totally different year. We're in violation of the matching required between revenue and expenses. Expenses have to follow revenue in the same year that the related revenue is recorded. Is there anything else wrong with what we did? Yes, there is something wrong in 2014 also. Remember that we recorded the accounts receivable at 360000 in 2014. Because we sold on credit, we should have known that some of those accounts would never be collected in cash. By keeping accounts receivable in 2014 at $360,000, we are overstating our assets. Our assets are greater than their expected future economic benefit. So, in 2014 we have an overstatement of our assets because they are not equal to their future economic benefit. 
and we understated our expenses because we didn't match them to the revenue they helped to generate. In addition, in 2015, we've not matched the expense to the revenue it helped to generate in that year, so our expenses are overstated in 2015 because they're in the wrong time period. What a mess. By ignoring what might go wrong in the future at the end of 2014, we've made a mess of two years of financial statements. The method that I just showed you, where we wrote off accounts receivable directly to the bad debt expense in 2015, a different year than the related revenue, is called the direct write-off method. It violates the definition of the element's expense in 2015 and the element assets in 2014. Does this mean we can never use it? Well, actually, sometimes we can. If, and only if, the write-offs of accounts receivable are immaterial, meaning that they are small enough that they will not change the decisions of the users of the financial statements, we can use the direct write-off method. Yes, it violates the definition of the element expense in 2015 and the element asset in 2014, but if the amount is small in relation to the company's overall economic activity, it's not going to affect any decisions that anyone makes, and we can use it. What happens if the write-offs are large in relation to the other numbers on the financial statements? Well, in that case, we definitely cannot use the direct write-off method. If we did, we would overstate our accounts receivable in 2014, and we would overstate our expenses in 2015. Since we can't use the direct write-off method, what method can we use so our assets will be appropriately valued in 2014 and will record our bad debt expense in 2014, the same year that the related revenues is recorded? Well, we can use the allowance method. And that is the topic of our next video.